Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of the John Morris Show. This one we, we're going to be talking about sessions in PHP. So sessions let you store information across multiple browser pages. And unlike cookies, the information is stored on the server and not in the user's browser. Although technically, I believe it's the session ID is stored as a cookie, but that's really just a reference and the actual data is stored on the server. So it's a handy way of passing or maintaining data from page to page. So we're going to dive into this. So I've got three pages here to show you some how this kind of works across multiple pages. So the first thing that you need to do in order to start working with sessions is you need to start the session using this function session underscore start. Now this needs to be the first thing on your page before any sort of output. So if you try to do this in the middle of a page after there's been output, you'll get an error. It just doesn't work. It really, if you're going to use sessions, uh, it needs to be the first thing on your page. You'll also notice if we click to some of these other pages, it's on every page. So you need to use it on every page where you're going to be working with and using sessions because that session start function essentially loads up everything that you need in order to be able to work with sessions, the different functions, the super global, etc. All right, so that needs to be on every page, needs to be the very first thing on that page, and then you'll be good to go for working with sessions. After that, then you can mix in. You'll notice uh, I have this HTML body, so I'm outputting now, but I'm doing some stuff with sessions down here. Once you've started the session as the very first thing, then the rest of the stuff you can mix in with the HTML and the rest of the page. So it's just that session start that needs to come first. All right, so that's how you get up and going. Then you can store data into a session like this. So you'll notice that this is, we're using a session super global here. So this is like post, this is like get, etc. So it, it's very s similar syntax. We're just using the word session instead of post or get. And so you can set this in a very similar way. So dollar sign underscore session. And then we're going to have our opening brackets, some opening uh, quotations. I have double quotations here. Then the name of what you want the variable that you're storing to be. So in this case, we're using first name. And then close your quotes and close your brackets. And then set that equal to whatever you want the value. So we're just matching up. Essentially, it's like an array. You have a key and you have a value. So that's that's all we're really doing here. So we have session first name equals John. And we have session last name equals Morris. So that's how you set data. Now, if we look over here on our actual output page, you can see... I'm on this index.php page. I'll just go ahead and refresh this. And this isn't out this isn't going to output anything. The only output on this page is actually our link to go to page 2. So when we loaded this page, we started the session and we set these variables and now we're going to go to page 2. So if we look at the code for page 2, this is how you then uh this is how you output data. So here we have or session data. Here we have my name is, and then we start our PHP echo session first name. Again, we're just referencing the super global and the key, and then we're contentating and session last name. If you scroll this over a little bit, it's how you would imagine it. So nothing really super fancy here. If we click on page two, then you'll see it says my name is John Morris. That's the information that we set into the session data as our value. So first name was set to John, last name was set to Morris, it's outputting John Morris. You can also print R a session just like you would a post array or any other sort of array and you'll notice it is actually in array notation. It's an associative array is how the data actually gets stored. Again, just like post, just like get. So in our array we have first name John, last name Morris at first, then if you want to update a session, all you do is just overwrite it. So again, this line here, we have uh, session, first name equals, and we set it now to Johnny. And then we print our session again, and you'll notice that we have now Johnny Morris here. 
So that's how you update the data in a session. You just overwrite it. So you basically just set it again like you did when you first set it. All right, so then you can see we have our link here to page three. We're now set to Johnny Morris. And on page three, what we're going to do if we look at the code, we're going to destroy the session and then we're going to print it back out so we can see it's destroyed. Now you're going to notice something a little funky here when we do this. So we click page three and you'll notice that when we load the page, we actually still have our session data here, even though we destroyed it. So is our session actually destroyed? Well, if we go to directly here, I got to do this just because of my IDE, but if we go to 3.php directly, you'll notice that if we go back to it, the ray is actually empty now. So we did destroy the session, but when we grabbed the super global, essentially, when the page loaded for our print R, the data was still in there. So that can be a little funky when you're working with the destroy function. If you try and kind of print R afterward, right after it, uh, you're, it's going to look like it wasn't destroyed, but it actually was. So we did destroy our session just the way the loading of the page and the super global and so forth happens that even though we destroyed it, our print R that came after that destroy still had the data in it because that data was loaded before we actually ran session destroy. I know that can be a little bit maybe confusing, but the point is uh, the session was destroyed, even though it didn't necessarily look like it. All right, so uh, that is how to uh, start a session, add data to it, update data, display data, and then ultimately destroy the session. Now, you can also store data submitted in a form. In You can store it into a session. So you would just simply create the form like you would normal on one page and then on the page that the form submits to so when you create a form that you're going to use inside a php oftentimes it will submit to another page sometimes it'll submit to the same page but wherever you're handling that post data whether it's another page in the top block of the same page whatever it is uh, on that particular page all you would do is just grab the the uh, post data and store it into the session. So if we went to page two here, let's say we had submitted a form on our first page here, we could go ahead and store the post data into a, our session data like this. So we use our session super global. Let's say we're just going to do first name again. And we're going to set that equal to what we have in our post array. So assuming we collected first name in our uh, post array we're just going to set it like this so that will that will take whatever was submitted in our post data and now store it into our session here so it's really simple to do that uh, you're just basically <laughs> transferring it from one super global to the other so so pretty straightforward now with this particular thing uh, with it being super uh, user submitted data, of course, you'll want to apply any security principles that you believe are appropriate. I'm not going to go through all of that sort of stuff here. That's a whole nother probably set of videos, but whatever you know, whatever you believe is appropriate, you want to apply that. At a minimum, I would say that if you're going to output this data that's user submitted, uh, you would want to go ahead and escape it to prevent any sort of cross site scripting attacks. So, uh, I would say at a minimum that that would what you, be what you'd want to do along with anything else that you think makes sense. Now, as for uses, there's lots of ways that, that this sessions can be used. I would say one of the more common ones is multi-page forms. So, you know, a job application might be a, a good example. It could be, say, a four-page form, and you want to track all the data submitted across those pages and then also be able to pre-populate any fields that have already been submitted with the existing data. So if a user you know, fills out page two and then goes to page three and goes, oh shoot, I need to go back to page two. When they go back to page two, you don't want all that data to be lost and they have to fill out the entire thing. You want it all pre-populated with the data they already submitted so they only have to change this whatever it is that they wanna change. Sessions will do that, let you do that and actually do it pretty easily because again you can see here 
on each page where we can very easily grab the post data and store it into a session. And now it's there until that session is ended or you destroy it. So uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do with sessions. Matter of fact, I would say learning to create multi-page forms like that is one of those skills that you can learn and it allows you to start getting paid for it almost immediately because it's a pretty hot little web development niche that you know when when you know how to do this it's it's pretty straightforward and you can get into it pretty quickly and it doesn't take a lot of all this other stuff that you gotta gotta learn and again it's a, it's a really hot niche I've talked about this before but you can take Wufu forms for example that that company sold to SurveyMonkey in 2011 for $35 million, $35 million. And ultimately what they do is they help users to create multi-page forms. That's what Wufu is. Even SurveyMonkey itself, a survey is basically a multi-page form. And SurveyMonkey's estimated revenue for 2016 was $200 million. So it's pretty insane just how big this particular niche is and it's all based at its core on multi-page forms and you know those solutions as big as they are aren't going to fit every person out there there are going to be people out there and they're you know just from looking at projects and so forth out there there are plenty of people out there who want really highly customized type forms a more premium type of form that Wufu or SurveyMonkey or any of the other solutions out there aren't going to be able to give them. And so that's where you as a developer can come in. You know, you could either get hired at one of these companies like SurveyMonkey to do this sort of work on these sort of projects, or you could do freelance and get hired to build customized, very highly customized forms for clients and charge a pretty penny for it. So again, it's just one of those really hot niches and at its core, it's based on multi-page forms. So Anyway, like I said, one very lucrative use of sessions. So if you want to learn how to use sessions and build a multi-page form like that, I actually show you how to do that at the end of module two of my PHP 101 course. And right now I'm running a limited time 37% off special on the course. So until Friday, July 14th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can get the course for 37% off at johnmorrisonline.com slash special. So you're going to learn how to build a multi-page form along with more about sessions, cookies, creating files and folders, uploading files, MySQL, including pr prepared statements, PDO, MySQLi, also sending email, a whole bunch more most everything that you would want need to know about PHP in order to start doing PHP development as your career. So if you want to give that a go, again, the link is johnmorrisonline.com slash special, and it ends Friday, July 14th at 1159 Pacific Standard Time. So you want to jump on it here pretty quick. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Again, thanks for listening. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.